What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 incredible moves WWE wrestlers did only once. Sometimes wrestlers get into their actual wrestling bag and pull out a move that you may not have ever seen them do, and they probably won't ever do it again. You know, it's a it's a one-off type situation. So we're gonna check out some of these moments. Appreciate all the love and support, man. You guys have shown on the channel. Roll two. 150k let's get right into this we're going straight into the video now it's common for wrestlers particularly in wwe to have a set list of moves that they perform in every single match of course wrestlers rarely deviate away from this list as it's what fans expect from them during a featured match but on occasion a wrestler will pull out that a move a that fans have never spot. seen them Look deliver before oh my god this rare move is usually implemented to bring out something new and unique to a match and the move will be retired after its single use keeping the impact of the one time only moved intact mm. forever that was a crazy Join us now as WrestleMania looks at crazy 10 spot. moves WWE wrestlers One of the best women matches once. of all time. Sasha versus Bayley, one of the best women matches of all time when they were in NXT. Oh my God, that match was great. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our own wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Edge 619. Oh, I remember the castle this. event was special for several reasons. It's such it was a good the first time in over 30 years that the UK had received a special stadium show, and it would have been the first time ever that certain fans would have been able to see Edge live in person. This was evident when Edge's music hit, and he almost blew the roof off the stadium. Oh, Without question, one of the that that was such a good. Just oh man, that whole show was great, bro. That's still, honestly, is still one of my best, like, best shows of 2022 for WWE. Hands down. That that Clash at the Castle is easily top two, top. It's, it's top two, in my opinion. Shit was great from top to bottom. Crowd was fantastic. When Edge came out there, over 70,000 people singing his song. Beautiful, bro. One of his biggest ovations of his career... Edge would team up with Rey Mysterio against Finn Balor and Damian Priest. And during the match, Edge decided to introduce a one-time only move into his arsenal. Edge would deliver his own version of Mysterio's 619 to the sheer delight of fans. Yeah. Edge's version of the move was naturally sloppy, and it's of course. unlikely he'll ever do it again. But it was a fun moment that yeah, fans it was a, it, it, was, it wasn't that good. Forget. It wasn't that beautiful. Number looking, nine, but Victoria it was cool. snap suplex. Now, Victoria was a vastly underrated talent in WWE and only seemed to get better as the years went on. Victoria's most notable feud during a time in the company was a 2002 feud with Trish Stratus. The two would have a hardcore match at the Survivor Series pay-per-view, and this match deserves a ton of credit for being way ahead of its time. Damn. What's interesting about the match finish was that Victoria seemingly used a generic move as a finisher. She would use a standard snap suplex as a finisher, and it actually secured the victory and the women's title. Wow. Whilst Victoria would go on to use a suplex again in matches, it was never determined to be her finisher, so it was unique in the sense that this was the only time that she would use a move a in this manner. Suplex got Just 24 win. hours after the match, Victoria would debut her Widow's Peak finishing move, which was a perfect fit for oh, her persona, I like and that. is widely considered yeah. one of the best finishing moves of all. No, that move actually is way much better. <laughs> that shit looks impactful. It looks painful. I like it. Love it, love it, love time. it. Time. Number 8, The Undertaker, Angle Slam. Now, there have been some iconic triple threat matches in the mm -hmm. WWE, but perhaps the most iconic took place at the 2002 Vengeance pay-per-view. The Undertaker would defend his WWE title against Kurt Angle and The Rock in a match that had something for everyone. Mm -hmm. The wrestling was superb, but the match also had a ton of comedy that was delivered very well and still holds <laughs> up two in the back. later. The most notable spot in the match occurred when the three wrestlers decided to steal each other's finishing moves. In an insane sequence, The Rock performed a choke time <laughs> on Taker before applying an ankle lock to Angle, and Angle would then perform his own version of The Rock Bottom on The Rock before the dead man rose to his feet and performed an angle slam on the Olympic gold medalist. Oh, take me back. It was a fantastic spot, and this marked the first and only time that the dead man performed the trademark move. He did Number pretty seven, good too. Johnny Gargano, STF. But Johnny Gargano oh, likes to use a man, move known as... this was such a great match, bro. Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa when Tommaso was just pure evil. Oh, my God. Take me back. It was so good. That match was great. And him tapping him out. 
with his own knee brace. Oh, that looks so brutal. It was right. I loved it, dog. Oh, my. <sighs> Take me back, man. Take me back. <laughs> the Gargano escape is his finishing move. He rarely deviates from using this as his submission-based finishing move, but during his acclaimed feud with Tommaso Ciampa, he decided to use a one-time only move. Mm -hmm. The finish of their unsanctioned match at NXT so TakeOver New Orleans saw Gargano apply the STF with a knee brace. Oh my this was God. a completely unique finish and certainly helped elevate so the match good. as it was evident when Dave Meltzer <laughs> awarded the match a five-star rating. Damn, that's Number six, great. Kane, Hurricane Rana. In the summer of 2001, a random match for the Intercontinental title between Kane and Albert on SmackDown managed to exceed everyone's expectations. For whatever reason, the two men seemed adamant on delivering a memorable match, and Kane would deliver a move that truly blew the fans away. As Albert had Kane in a powerbomb position, Kane countered the move and unbelievably performed a hurricane runner. Which is crazy for someone. received a thunderous reaction from the crowd, and even Michael Cole and Taz <laughs> on commentary couldn't even believe what they just witnessed. Someone that size doing that is really impressive. <laughs> the match would eventually be won by Albert in one of the biggest wins of his WWE career, and it could be theorized that Kane wanted to make the match as memorable as possible. Number five, CM Punk, Pile Driver. For the longest time in WWE, the pile driver had been outright banned. Mm -hmm. However, during a match between CM Punk and John Cena on Raw in 2013, Punk decided to perform the move on Cena to the mm -hmm. shock of fans across the world, as well as WWE personnel backstage. Punk had done the move in other promotions, but he'd never once performed the move in WWE. According to reports at the time, former WWE chairman Vince McMahon was absolutely furious that Punk had delivered the move, and Punk would seem to confirm these reports in a... Did you ever get any heat backstage for doing that pile driver on Xena? Uh, also, you've been a massive inspiration to me, and I wish you nothing but success and happiness in life. And his response, I mean, people were mad, but if you really think about it, they're big babies. <laughs> tweet in 2020. <laughs> Whilst WWE deserves some respect for banning the move they deemed to be too dangerous and unsafe, yeah. the pile driver spot certainly elevated the match and some fans will argue that it's the best bell to bell match ever seen on WWE's flagship show. Number 4 Hulk Hogan Rock Bottom and Nobody could have ever predicted the extent of how much fans would be behind Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18. Mm -hmm. Hogan collided with The Rock in an absolute dream match and the match delivered everything fans could have ever wanted. Every spot Hogan and The Rock did in the match seemed to work, and fans were invested in everything they did. One of the most infamous spots in the match saw Hogan deliver his own version of The Rock Bottom to The Rock. This made fans in attendance go absolutely yep. crazy. Hogan had always been reserved in adding moves to his arsenal, as he preferred to keep his established moves intact. However, when Hogan used the move on this occasion, it was a perfect chance for and Hogan looked to good deviate too. away from his own rules and create a moment that fans will remember forever. Number 3, Randy Orton Styles Clash At the start of 2020, WWE would book a mini-TV feud between Randy Orton and AJ Styles leading up to the Royal Rumble <laughs> pay-per-view. As part of this rivalry, Orton and AJ would compete in a triple threat match which also involved Drew McIntyre, and the match would feature a unique spot which sent social media into a frenzy. In the match, Orton would deliver his own version of AJ Styles' Clash move, and Orton, similarly to Hulk Hogan, has been reluctant to change his moveset. Which is very occasion, impressive to pull that off. It enhanced the story that WWE were telling. It can certainly be argued that the spot should have been on pay-per-view, as yeah. with it being on a random episode of Raw, it's easy to forget. Yeah. Thanks to social media and YouTube, the spot ended up having a hugely positive reception, which was great to see. Number two, Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely something that should have been reserved for a pay-per-view because you know that's a spot like randy orton hitting the styles clash on aj styles that's wild uh hopefully uh, i believe he had to end up getting a surgery on his spine he had spinal fusion surgery so i'm not sure his condition hopefully randy orton can come back you know you know healthy if he's able to i'm not sure because anything dealing with the fusion of your neck could definitely shorten your career. So hopefully that's not the case. But at the end of the day, it's all about the well-being of the, the wrestlers and, you know, them being able to actually live a normal or normalish life when they're done wrestling. So if he needs to take away and, you know, take some extra time away to heal his body, go ahead and do that, man. Wishing him a speedy recovery, bro. Pedigree. Cody Rhodes delivered a performance of a lifetime For sure. at the 2022 Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. 
Rhodes went into his Hell in a Cell showdown with Seth Rollins with a torn pectoral, and it was a miracle that Rhodes was able to compete, never mind have an all-time classic. There were several moments in the match that received praise from fans, but the spot which saw Rhodes deliver a pedigree, pedigree was yeah. truly fantastic. Rhodes had previously teased using a pedigree in prior matches with Rollins, but this time he actually delivered it to the unanimous applause of the fans in attendance. Mm -hmm. This marked the first time Rhodes had successfully used the move in WWE, and it's unclear if he'll use the move again or if this was just a one-time only spot. I think it should just be a one-time only spot only because you, you know that uh, Seth would stay, he stayed using the pedigree, you know, his a relationship with Triple H and stuff like that. So it only was fitting that he used the pedigree on Seth, since Seth is the only one that really uses it outside of Triple H. I don't think he needs to use it anymore. You know what I'm saying? It just, it only made sense in that situation with that opponent. And number one, Undertaker, the spear. A SummerSlam 2008 is notable for being WWE's first pay-per-view of the new PG era. What fans questioned upon hearing the news of WWE's new era was just how WWE could deliver their planned SummerSlam main event under PG guidelines. Mm -hmm. The planned main event of SummerSlam was a Hell in a Cell showdown between arch rivals Edge and The Undertaker. Now, to WWE's credit, they managed to pull it off. They, the match had yeah, a ton of did. violent spots, but the match was also a fitting conclusion to a yeah. decorated rivalry. What was also interesting about the match was that The Undertaker decided to deliver a move he's never this done was before, a good match, and it just so happened to be Edge's own finisher. During the match, the dead man delivered a devastating speed Woohoo! edge, which genuinely took everyone by surprise. Yeah. It went perfectly into the match and showed that The Undertaker was having to use every tool it took to finally defeat the Raider. Oh my Superstar god, this was such a fun match, bro. But they have it folks, that was such a fun match, dog. Oh my god, that shit was fun. That was a fun match. And I was a PG Hell in a Cell. That shit was fucking fun. That shit was fun, bro. Uh, granted, I've always thought Hell in a Cell definitely should have some type of color in it because, you know, you're in a cell, you're in a cage, you're trying to <laughs> destroy your opponent. So, um, but nevertheless, still an enjoyable match. And it was cool to see some of these wrestlers using other wrestlers' moves. So, comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite instance of a wrestler using someone else's move as like a finisher or just like a, a a nice interesting spot in the match let me know down below if it if that person wasn't on this list if you can remember a time where a wrestler used someone else's finisher or some move they never used before to either help them win the match or create a nice unique moment in that match but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace